Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got a weapons mastery video. This is where we're going to get 500 kills with a gun, review it at the same time, talk about the good attachments to use with the weapon and what the weapon is generally good for. We're using the MX4 PDW today. This is the starting weapon for the engineer. And to be honest, I hadn't used it too much since basically the beta. As soon as I got the next engineer weapon or a carbine, I just started using that with the engineer and didn't really come back to the MX4. So I kind of had to refresh myself on this gun upon using it again. Now, for those of you who don't know too much about this futuristic looking little PDW, it's actually developed by Beretta. It's called the MX4 Storm, and it's actually classified as a carbine in real life. It shoots a 9mm round just like Beretta's M9 pistol, so same caliber, and in fact, the magazines for the MX4 Storm are interchangeable with the M9 pistol, which is pretty amazing, and it was kind of designed that way so that you could run both weapons and basically only have to carry one type of magazine. Now, a fun fact about this weapon is that because it looks so futuristic in design, it's been getting a bunch of cameos in TV shows and movies. One of the first times I saw this gun was in Battlestar Galactica. It was actually one of the standard carbines available for the Marines in it. Now normally when I get back into using a gun after not having used it for a while and I want to do a video on it or I want to figure out how to run the weapon, I'll pop open a simthick.com page on the stats and kind of look at it and try and figure out what the best possible way might be to run the gun, then test it out with some attachments, adjust as needed, and go from there. Now upon checking out the stats on simthick.com, I was blown away by just how bad they are for this weapon and it sort of reminded me like, oh yeah, maybe that's why I haven't used this gun in forever it is that bad. It did actually see a little bit of an update with the last patch. They actually reduced the primary damage from 25 to 24, much like many of the other guns in the game. They also made its accuracy a little bit better while on the move, which is something that a lot of other PDWs in the game got. So it kind of got the standard treatment. Nothing really specialized to the MX4. Now I've popped the SimThick stats in here because we're going to really need to analyze these a bit just so you can understand why the gun's so bad, and then hopefully we can figure out a way to make it better. They are constantly doing patches to BF4, so hopefully this is something that we can fix. Maybe it's an easy fix, maybe not. We'll find out. Now the first thing we come across is a pretty hefty rate of fire, 830 rounds per minute. Not too bad, in fact you're going to be able to dish out quite a good amount of DPS with this gun in extremely close quarters. It's got a 390 meters per second bullet velocity, which is definitely slow but also characteristic of some of the 9mm projectiles. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Those are pretty much in line with how this gun should be performing in real life. Taking a look at the damage model, we've got the 24 max, which is unfortunate. We still got that 5 shot kill requirement in close quarters even. It drops off to 12.1 at range, which, you know, is pretty typical of a PDW. It does have a little bit more range on it though than some of your other typical PDWs, which is interesting considering that the bullet velocity is so low. It's not really going to help you out that much and I don't recommend using this gun at longer ranges. Medium range and closer, that's pretty much it. And then checking out the reload times, we have a really, really long 2.5 second reload for the short reload on this gun and 3.4 for the long reload. I don't understand why the reload times on this weapon are so long, especially considering that the reload is virtually identical to the M9 Beretta, which has a 1.3 second reload in this game. You're still putting the magazine in the pistol grip of this weapon. It's the exact same process. The reload button is in the same spot. There's a charging handle on this, whereas with the Beretta, you just pulled the slide back. It's virtually the exact same process, yet this one takes literally over a second longer for the short reload and almost two seconds longer for the long reload. I really, really disagree with this stat both realistically and on a game balance level because it just doesn't make a lot of sense. This gun is really only good in close quarters yet you give it a really long reload time where it just doesn't have any other benefits going for it. The least you can do is give it a nice fast reload which is characteristic of how you would reload the gun in real life. And if that weren't bad enough, the recoil on this weapon is certainly nothing to brag about. It's got very high side to side recoil, 0.5 pull left, 0.2 pull right, and a 0.36 vertical recoil which is pretty high in general, also considering it has a 2.6 first shot recoil multiplier. I found it very hard to hold this gun steady and control the recoil and get a lot of accurate follow up shots, which is why you'll see me using the angled foregrip. The first shot recoil multiplier was so intense in general it made it really hard to get nice precise bursts with this weapon and I found the only way I was able to do even decently with the gun was with the angled foregrip. Anything else it just didn't really work out. 
Now for barrel modifiers on this gun you have a couple choices. If you're having trouble with the vertical recoil still you can always put a muzzle brake on there to lessen it a bit. If you want to try and increase your accuracy at range you can reduce the side to side recoil by putting a compensator on there. However, since you're using this gun primarily in close quarters, your biggest benefit is to use a suppressor to try and keep yourself off that minimap long enough to get your reload done. It's pretty much one of the only ways to survive the painfully long reload time of this weapon. Now the bullet velocity isn't great to begin with at 390. The suppressor, I believe, lowers it to around 280, which again isn't particularly great, but it's not that big of a hit overall. And if you are just trying to use it in close quarters, then it should still be usable, although 280 is still really tricky to use especially when you're trying to hit moving targets even at medium range you really have to start leading with the suppressor on the thing so to reiterate my attachment preference on this gun suppressor angled foregrip whichever red dot sight you prefer i like the cobra now something occurred to me while making this video, I haven't put SimThick stats into a vid too much recently. I've mostly tried to break down guns or recommendations into simpler terms and not have to rattle off lots of numbers and stats and stuff like that. Do you guys prefer videos that have a lot of stat breakdowns on the weapons and we look at the SimThick stats? Or do you prefer ones that are kind of more simplified and I just kind of go over the basics of what you need to do to get a gun performing well or something like that? Please let me know in the comments because that would really give me some great insight into what you prefer as viewers. Do you want stats or do you want a simplified explanation of everything? My current preference to simplifying the videos has generally been that if somebody's really that interested in all the exact stats of a gun, you can always go to the SimThick.com website yourself and check them out and analyze the heck out of it to your heart's content. Now we're nearing the mastery dog tag unlock here, the 500 kill mark, and I will say it was a bit of drudgery going through. I didn't enjoy this one quite so much as I enjoy getting the other mastery dog tags. The MX4 was a hard weapon to use. Sure, I had some really good games with it, but a lot of that is because I'm using the suppressor. Most guns can be extremely good if you get the suppressor, you're playing some domination or team deathmatch, and you just stay off that minimap and flank the heck out of your opponents. In that situation, any gun is good as long as you get that reload time. Time, you shouldn't have to worry about your opponents sneaking up on you. In a straight up firefight against people using carbines and assault rifles, the MX4 is just going to get slaughtered every single time. And depending on who I'm playing against, your perception of this gun can change pretty drastically. Sure, it looks like I'm absolutely dominating people here, but I won't say that I was playing against the most skilled players in the world by any means. And that's something that I've noticed a lot of novice players or casual players will jump to conclusions real fast because they'll have a really good round with a gun and say, oh, it's the best gun in the game, or it's so good I don't know what you're talking about. Well, maybe you should really try and judge the caliber of player you play against before you judge the caliber of your weapon. Anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for the MX4 Mastery Dog Tag video. Let me know in the comments which weapon you'd like me to master next. The video description actually has a list of my remaining guns. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing out.